Welcome. Nice to be here for the first time for me, and, and I hope it just works. I, usually when I have stuff on me, it's like site survey and, and all the different things. So with this thing, it's the first time. I guess I should say who, you are, who we are. Seven Lab in Sweden, Stockholm. We're doing a lot of troubleshooting. Um, well, surprise, surprise. Uh, Wi-Fi troubleshooting, uh, Wi-Fi surveys, spectrum analysis. Uh, it's an interesting thing, really, when you start digging into it, as you all know, obviously. But what we're trying to do now, or at least what I'm trying to talk about this hour, is looking at this thing from a different angle, different, different perspective, um, client perspective. How our clients in Wi-Fi network, how do they see um, the network? How do they experience it? Um, are they doing okay? How does it look if you have that sort of clients versus the other sort of clients? We're going to see a lot of empirical data, something that Keith said he, he, he loves, so, so that's going to be fine. Um, well, let's move on. Say so the challenge. What, 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 what's the challenge in this? And, 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 and you probably know all of those things, and you can build in the list hugely. Um, we are looking at those more difficult clients than others. They are those that are moving quite quickly. I mean, with your experience, you probably know that Wi-Fi is not exactly performing best if, you, if, you, if you're moving faster than you're walking, probably. It depends on your experience. But if, you, if you're driving 50 kilometers an hour or 60, that, that's not good. Uh, you're probably going to be missing access points like, like a lot. And, and I have a data to, to look at it. We can laugh at this, but, but at some point it's, it's important, at some point it's not. So let's focus on those in constant motion uh, and, and quite high speed motion in terms of Wi-Fi and not like fast trains. Um, so normally this is what we see. This is like, it comes to us somehow and, and they tell you the end users they don't really like it. And okay, there can be different reasons. Uh, how, how do we go about it? What, what, what do we do? The most difficult ones are the intermittent ones. We cannot reproduce it, right? I'm, I'm sure you've seen in, in your career, you've seen a lot of those. It's like, yeah, it was twice yesterday and then the last week was really perfect, nothing happened. And then tomorrow it's going to be five times. Uh, how, how do we go about it? What, what do we, how, how do we you know, put the finger on it? Um, and, and, and again, I'm insisting on this client's perspective. It, it's actually interesting because uh, most of the time what we're looking at, we're looking from, from, from the infrastructure perspective, or we have some sort of a third-party tool that will uh, analyze the traffic. And there's a couple of vendors that can do that, and, and you can go in, you can, you can record it, and you can analyze it offline, and you can figure out, yes, this was it. Um, but that's not, and, and I'm not sure whether you've seen it. <laughs> you have those things that, you know, the guy said, no, no, this network works with this clients. It's only those clients that don't work. So my network must be doing fine. It always worked. And then, then you can just have a similar situation when, when they all of a sudden change something. Or, 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 or then the, the client people tell the network people, no, this is your network that is not working. Our clients work all over the place. It's just here they don't work. Interrupt issues. And, and, and I think, I don't know how it looks for you guys, but it, for us it's a lot of device mix. And, and I'm sure you're seeing this as well. I mean, it's, it's, it's very difficult to control your devices. You have gazillion types with some of those 11B. I mean, you that out there, you, you know that they do have 11B devices out there here and there, especially in the industry. They do have it. They have a lot of those in some cases. Then you have the whole 2.4 gigahertz band. I, I have a nice slide with data on 2.4 gigahertz. Um, well, it's difficult to locate the problems, whatever that is. So that's why we need to see how each and every client actually sees the network, how they perceive it. And, and we call it even a quality of experience on a very simple level, to be honest. So what is our workflow? That, that we've, over a couple of years, we, we've tried to debug. Um, imagine industry, 100 hectares, and there's like forklifts, machines moving, like an example. Um, they lose the contact three times a week or maybe five times a day. 
And, and there's no specific place where it happens, nor is this a specific forklift that, that does that. It, it's just happening. Um, so what we propose, we have this nice tool that we developed ourselves. Uh, we're going to talk about it. It's kind of an engineering tool. It's, it's nothing special, really. But in terms, it, you couldn't find anything on the market that can beat that in that particular niche. Um, a lot of in, when we have gone through this, we probably know what we have. We we we, we might most of the cases parallelly look in a, in, in a in a controllers and and we'd see like or the management software. So do we have something that is strange? Is this data from clients matching the data from 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 the controllers from the Wi-Fi network? That would be typically the next the next step for us. Um, if something is really bad, then, then, then we'd have no, no chance and just go and, and do the over-the-air protocol and spectrum analysis. And, and, and it's kind of a spot check, as you know, and, and that's, it works when you can actually reproduce the problem, but if you cannot reproduce the problem, you're there and waiting. And there are a couple of products out there with like sensors, you can leave them there, they can, you can trigger something and, and they will just do this, this forensics file or you can analyze afterwards. It takes a while before you've actually figured out what you need to trigger on, right? So, okay, without further ado, how do we do this? It, what, what's, what, what's the thing that is, that is different in that approach? Imagine our forklift. It doesn't have to be forklift. It actually is quite good in, in some other environments, but this is where it's kind of a must, at least the way we see it. They normally communicate through a Wi-Fi network. That's nothing new. They, they would be like, uh, most of the times it's Windows PCs, like ruggedized PCs on those. And, and, and most of the time it's like, like they go through some sort of local gateway all the way to application server. Um, this would be like, I don't know, updating the database. We picked up X and moved it from A to B, right? And then we pick B and move it from Z to Y or something like this. Um, what we do, we install a very small agent on each of those PCs. They run in the background. The operators don't know. Uh, they don't want to know. Uh, and we, we do two tests, connectivity tests. Uh, we can choose the, 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 the actual service, but we do this in, in, in between the client and local gateway or local IP. The first IP you can actually ping after Wi-Fi. So you have this Wi-Fi part, and then you have your, your, your destination server, the, the, the thing that, that has to work for this particular environment. So I mean, obviously, if both of them fail, you can say, yeah, th this was Wi-Fi. But if the Wi-Fi part works, like test one, and test two doesn't, well, that you know this, it's not a Wi-Fi. And believe me, a lot of IT people that take care of the network, yes, it wasn't the network. So that's the other guys. <laughs> And I, <laughs> it's been always like this, I guess, network versus server or, or the application. So what happens then? We obviously have logs that, that during this, we, we do it all the time. Most of the time, every fifth second. So five seconds interval. It, it's not very fast, but it's just about to give us a, a pretty good uh, insight in what's happening. All right, so these logs are going to, to the server, which kind of crunches the data. It's not the big data we heard before, but it, it's some data crunching, and then we have some nice parameters. Because what I didn't say is, here, when the, we collect a lot of stuff, not just we have round trip times to those servers, we do have our SSI, we do have signal quality, and, and we have a bunch of other RF parameters from the Windows itself, from the operating system of this particular track. So we can at the same time say, well, well, how are they doing? Not just connectivities on or off. So how do we collect the data? I think I said a little bit about it, but somewhere there, there is a Wi-Fi card, and, and this Wi-Fi card has drivers, and through the drivers it talks to a Windows OS, and, and there are those APIs, it has to comply. The card has to use those APIs, so we tap into those APIs. Uh, we call their mobile collector. They, they collect a little correct tool that is running on the clients. And it's just collecting this data that is then being sent up to the server. Um, yeah, we use the native API and uh, Wi-Fi API, and, and, and this is the things we're collecting. Um, 
it, it's actually based on ping in, in terms of connectivity, and, and, but it's incredibly powerful. You might think that's just a ping, but if you have a lot of pings, and, and, and you're getting into the statistical image of this. You have thousands of pings, and you see that all of them have certain de behavior. Uh, you start to draw conclusions, actually. Um, OK, this is what everybody likes, and I thought I'm kind of obliged to put this there. So what you're going to see is, is, is not a, 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 it's an office environment. It, it's just like it could be here. A lot of companies there, like a small or medium-sized company, they all have their own network, BYOD and what's not. Well, how we read this. This is our, our um, round trip time in milliseconds. This is our time scale. So um, here's the, the our BSS ID indicator. So, so here is one access point, and here's another access point. Well, guess one, which one is 2.4, which one is 5 gigahertz. So, so we're, we're having a lot of those spikes being ping times over 100 milliseconds, well over 100 milliseconds. And it, it, it's like, I have 10, 12 access points, each of them doing, I'm not sure, 5, 10, 15 percent of, of channel utility, but if you add it up and, and all those collisions and retransmissions, it's going to add up to this. And then the very same place and the very same access point, uh, just going over to 5 gigahertz. So you have occasional uh, spots, and you have two colors, obviously. For, one is for one host, remember? Test one and test two. So one of them is local gateway. The other one is the, um, the application. Which is which? I'm not quite sure, to be honest, in this particular case. Uh, they're fairly similar, you can see. Um, but I think the next picture is just about that. It's not the network. So now it's easy to, I'm not sure whether that comes across, this green one. But you see, this is like zoomed in. So we, we're looking at this particular time. This is our gateway, Wi-Fi. Just the first IP you can ping. And this thing is is a, a, a server, remote server. It, and that means when it tops off like this, it means it's, um, um, it, it's a loss, ping loss. It, we, we, we timed out. We, we just realized, and when you're looking at those graphs, it's actually much better when you have, instead of stopping the graph, you, you have some sort of max value that you put to your losses, because visually it's more appealing. You know that it's the, the worst ping you can get. So you see this one? The ping loss value of five, it, well, we choose automatically. So, so that's kind of worse than the worst ping by another 50%. So we record the pings, and the worst is 100%, and, and this value is 150%. So, so you can see all these values. We have a marker here. If you could see the marker, you could see ping loss, ping loss, to the green one. Are you with me on this? So that sounds simple, but it's actually quite powerful. Um, doesn't sound like a big deal, but we're talking to the gateway. We are able to communicate through Wi-Fi. OK, we have some ups and downs here, but that's OK. Um, but nothing comes across to the remote server, if you remember the diagram. So that's, that's simple, but it's still powerful. And what happens? What happens if you have 10 of those devices doing the same thing, and they experiencing the same thing at the same time? Or you have. We were talking like device mix. You have 10 different devices, say two different types, and, and you have five of those running this and five of those running this, and you have only five of those having that problem. Interesting. Um, so that's, that's, we, we, we haven't even touched on radio parameters yet. This is just a simple ping times. Could be really, really powerful. This is the RF part. Uh, I stuck it just. Uh, below that one, analysis graph, it's RF graph. So we have two values. The, read one, the red one is RSSI, it's here. I mean, it, it's stationary, more or less. It's kind of you know, going up and down a couple dBs, but that's stationary. And, and then the other thing that we tap onto the interface is signal quality. Um, we were looking at, at the APIs, the window APIs, Windows APIs in that case, and trying to find signal to noise. Uh, there wasn't. Well, that means that, that each vendor, like, like the card, NIC card vendor, they don't have to. They are not obliged to, to report signal to noise, but they do have something that's called signal quality. And that's not like a dB scale, that's something scale, but it gives you an idea whether it get, goes up or down. And, and you read it this, on, on this particular axis. So again, the green one is stationary, I guess it's 99 really max value. Uh, then you have the signal strength minus 57, not bad at all. 
yet you're having this. But hey, we knew already Wi-Fi is doing fine. So that's, that's uh, just a proof of it. You wouldn't, wouldn't re really need to go in there. Just to show we have that graph as well. And th that's another example, and I was thinking about this because I, I changed this presentation just like Keith mentioned and, and yesterday and this morning even, and, and I kind of spoiled the fun telling you this is a sticky client. Uh, I, I should have I, I left it kind of question mark, question mark, and, and see what happens. So this is a different environment. This is an, an industry. This is where you have a production line, things moving very slowly. Predefined pace, predefined path. So everything is very, it's kind of a textbook example. You're going to see this. So first, remember, uh, ping times. Here it goes really, really up. I mean, this is a ping loss. For how long that is? It, like five minutes. Five minutes, nothing comes through. Nothing comes through over five minutes. And you see, something is happening. There, there's this spikes every now and then just before. But, okay, we don't know it's a sticking client from there. We have to go the next step and see the radio parameters. Isn't it lovely? I mean, th this is, I mean, if you like Wi-Fi, it starts over there. It, oh, I think I went too far. Here. It starts over here. It's, it's fairly okay. Then it's moving. We're at minus, the read, uh, read the, the red one on that scale. We're like minus 70. Nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens until it goes down to minus 85. And, and if, I, if you remember this one, we're already into those five minutes that nothing comes true, more or less. And, and you don't see that, but it's actually both green and red ones that are not coming through. Uh, so, so here you're saying, well, at the end, it's actually taking the right decision and roaming to another access point. And our idea, how do you know it's a sticky client, not a coverage issue? I mean, we might have insufficient coverage in that particular case, right? Um, well, we, we collect more data. We collect more data, not all of it, we plot. So that's why, uh, but we go to the raw log data, or, or that's more or less how it came, and, and if we go, that's a date, or a timestamp, you see it's five seconds. Host one, the one that you're pinging, and ping time, and minus one for us is, is nothing comes back, timeout. And then you have another host, and then you have another ping, then you have SSID, BSSID channel, signal quality, RSSI. But we have this, RSSI's list. What we do, we try to ask the client, how many other access points do you see besides the one you're connected to? Obviously, they have to belong to the same, to the same network, meaning the same SSID. And it's not how our, our probe sees it, it's how they see it. You guys know that OS would normally do, kind of scan things every now and then when they feel like they are preparing for roaming, among other things. Uh, it's actually interesting to see that we're, we're it doesn't change all that much. It, it, yeah? So, can you repeat this from the video? Does come from Windows API? Right. They're accessible from the API? They are accessible. So these data, this, this data comes from Windows API. This, so we know, it, we, in that case, we don't know which market, which basic BSSID that is, but this is, oh, yet again. This is the RSSI values. So look at this one. We, we're hooked up to, uh, I think here we came back, uh, minus 84, this is where we had, it was time is going upwards. At this particular case, um, say this one, we were, we were still into this uh, before we roamed. You see BC31, and now we're on to a, AE, A1. So we're hoping here, 84, how many others do we have? You see minus 76, minus 66, minus 56. Um, just trying to see something else. No, but that's, that's plenty of strong access points. We actually build a small thing that would help you. That would just a script that would go through the data and tell you this is a sticky client. Uh, well, that's just the tips. I mean, you have to go and, and, and confirm that yourself. But interesting. You notice, and, and, and you would normally see a client having problems connecting and, 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 and having those disruptions. Whereas when you go and do the site survey or some, some other signal analysis, no, the network is perfect. No problem whatsoever. What was causing this to be sticky? Was it the driver issue? Yeah, I think it was the driver issue. Uh, I mean, we don't know what inside the driver. It's kind of a black box for us. So they just got a new driver and then think worked. 
So, so that's it. But it's interesting. Uh, there's a lot of other things. So fast-moving clients. Um, I assume that you already know a little bit how to read that graph. So that's our, um, that's our, our uh, ping times, and that's time. And here's something I didn't mention. Here's the, the, the RSSI indicator. Uh, sorry, a BSSID indicator. It's like This is an, one access point, another one, another, another, another. This is a car that's driving down into a mine. Uh, I thought mine is like you have those elevators that go down and... and the, well, apparently those, feet, those exist as well, but those mines are where you drive in a car, like 1,000 meters below and even further down. So you drive like 60 kilometers an hour, and you're passing all those access points there. And, and surprise, surprise, they have a Wi-Fi. They have mines with, with, with wi -Fi, full Wi-Fi coverage down there. Interesting. And, and what it says here, it, it cannot even ping. You, you see, this is five-second intervals. Nothing happened here. I mean, the, the NIC was not ready. It was, it was between the access points. It, it was doing scanning and finding out the best candidate to roam. Then it found it, and then wanted to roam, the candidate was gone. So, so it, it was doing, it must have been a lot of panic in here and in here, because it, it didn't realize what to do. It was rescanning and finding it, and rescanning and finding it. And the result of that, it, it stopped pinging altogether. And, and think about it, it it's five seconds every dot. So we're having like, what, half a minute? Nothing. Do you need a Wi-Fi there? I don't know. Some cases you do, some you don't. I, I'm not saying this is a... Um, it's an interesting way of looking at things, because you realize that Wi-Fi is not really good for those applications. If you have fast-moving clients. Um, so yeah, that, that's... This particular customer, they, they don't bother. I mean, this is just more of an interesting case for us to talk about. But they... The most important thing is, is when they get there, when they do the, the work down there, this has to work. On the way down or up, not really. You can see the, this is the same RF graph that is matching the analysis graph. So you can see that, well, it was pretty bad, actually. Uh, there were moments when it didn't get any data, you see this one. So, so it, it, it was low signal, minus 70, minus 80. It wasn't great. And, and back to the... Uh, connectivity or connectivity problems. And, and once they stabilize, if I, had, if I could zoom out, I could show you that there, there was no problem. It, it stabilizes and it's fine. Uh, channel 99. Anybody knows about that? Well, it, it doesn't strike you at first because there are so many channels and then you realize there isn't any. Um, well, so what, what's the story? You're already familiar with this interface. Um, so so you, you have time and, and something happens here. And, and th this is just like loss. Both things are just gone, nothing happens. And it's, it's hours like this, hours. I mean, I could have extended it. OK, so next time you look at the RF and you realize, oh, wow, that something was happening right there. And then it says minus 85, but it's constant. C can that be? It's just, there's no fluctuation whatsoever, it's just there. It, you would think it, it got kind of locks itself somehow. Okay, then you go further on and you realize into the data, we know that already, and you see what happened? Uh, there was this access point, it was the thing before the disaster came. Uh, 0189, 0189, 0189, it's still 0189, but now the driver thinks it's channel 99 instead of 1. So, and, and obviously, and, and this is where, where the minus ones started coming. You see the ping times. This is the, the, the top, like nothing comes back, the ping timeout. So, so we are doing perfectly okay, this part of it, of, of the graph, and this is our marker. And if we go here, this is our marker, the, the, the yellow line. And from now on, we start getting minus ones. And, and the funny part is that that the client thinks it's still the same access point, however, on channel 99. It was a valid access point on channel 1. Got stuck as well. Um, kind of the driver fixed the problem. I mean, moving to, to upgrading the driver. It, 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 that's interesting, really, if you come to think of it. Like, you have a lot of those things that, that you steer or control from, from, from the infrastructure, but there's so little you can see from, from the from, from, the, from the clients, and, and it can help you a great deal. And these are new machines. These are newly bought 
those kind of ruggedized Windows 10, I believe, machines, and, and they, they just bought like half a year ago. Back to this Channel 99 problem, and looking in Windows logs, at the very same time, we are, the Windows says itself uh, that it thinks it was uh, something to do with the driver. I mean, obviously, we, we can look at, at logs. We have the log, and that's the same timestamp where we're on the client itself. So how about digging further uh, and finding what happened? Now at least know where to look for. Imagine this, there's a driver and saying, it doesn't work. Half the shift, it didn't work. When did it start not working? I don't know. It doesn't work. It pisses me off. Now you know when. And you just go there and find things. This is a copy and paste from Windows Log. Simple. Bad decisions in life and, and in Wi-Fi. So it's about roaming again. Uh, uh, and it seems like it's a lovely thing to talk about because when you have like problems with roaming, everything goes down. It just, just doesn't work. Uh, so here, what are we seeing? Time of obviously working fine and then over the roof, ping loss. This is the access point that is in question. It's kind of similar to, to this first, or maybe not first, but the previous one with the sticky client. It went to a new access point, nothing works. It then went back to yet another access point, things are fine. Let's dig further on. RF. Well, the red one again. Um, as long as it's connected to the good one, it's kind of fluctuating, but it's fine. Something happens here, it's, it's maybe starting moving. So the volume is going down. Roaming needs to be made. There is a decision to roam to, I think it was a bad access point it chose. And then again, I don't know why, what are the, 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 the algorithms, uh, what, what are they triggering on and, and how this happened, but it ends up on an access point that is really, really poor in terms of signal strength. We are talking minus 85, which kind of explains this. You see how this thing is handy? I mean, you can tell when it roamed. So you can clearly correlate this one with this one. And it's just, just a coincidence that they have the same color. It has nothing to do. It's just a new access point. So if you look at the data, and this is, I believe, at this marker. You see the marker here? The one? Oh, look. I have to go to training on this. Um, so, so we have a lot of minus ones, which we know are bad. And then we're looking at this, uh, at this stuff. We are looking at, at channel 100. It exists for a change. That was a valid access point. Uh, low signal quality, low RSSI. We have five more guys to connect to. Minus 75, minus 70, minus, okay, minus 68. Should be good enough. And again, that's an interesting thing. And then for, for us that like to dig in stuff, Wi-Fi, you see how, how this doesn't change, say, just three of those. It, it, you know, the client didn't update anything. It didn't do the scanning on, on, on neighboring channels to update the list at that particular case. And yet again, it's just the driver that is guarding this and, and, and kind of steering this. We have a lot of clients. They have this. We have a lot of clients, they have, they're really, really hyperactive, a bit like I am. And could have some of the lazy ones that stay there for a minute or two minutes and nothing gets updated. But then again, they normally have no issue with communication, so they feel comfortable and they kind of ease off and, 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 and take, a, take a break. I said a lot about clients, and, and, and we, we went deep into this analysis and, 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 and we found things, but how about comparing them? Client mix, I, I've said it like three times. Well, is it a third time now? It, well, we, how about getting a table? Uh, so much for big data. So we have a lot of clients here. Uh, we have, this is a driver issue. So we were having those version two and version one, just comparison, it's exactly the same. Exactly the same hardware, exactly the same system. The only difference is the driver. So, so how do we read that? That's clients, that's a total connection failure time. Like, like from a day. And that's like seven minutes here. Uh, it's like six or five, and you see? That's like 25 seconds. We just went from version two to version one. By the way, they are sorted by the connection failure time. So, so again, version two is seven minutes, six minutes, five minutes, and then the worst version one is not even a minute. 
Interesting. Think about it. It was just a driver difference. It could be a different hardware. It could be different anything you'd like to compare. You're doing a small change in your network. You're playing with the power levels. You're enabling any feature in your controller. You might have stats from this week and last week and compare them, as it, pre presuming they are doing the similar routes and similar moving in a similar fashion. So what is another thing we see? Connection failure in percent, so that's the same value divided by how long time they were active. Um, well, it doesn't sound very bad. It's still below 1%, below 1 but that's not good. Another, okay. Another thing, if we are anyway looking at average RSSIs here, uh, sorry, if we're looking at RSSI, why not taking the average? What's the point? Again, we have all this data. Let's do something with it. So, so if you look at this, so this client during this one day, I, I believe we took one day for that particular table, experienced an average RSSI of 6935. Okay or not okay, I don't know. It, it's just a, just a number. But if you start comparing them to others, and one of them is experiencing 10 dBs, 15 dBs worse, what do you think? And, and you know it's the same device, like the, the identical device. Hmm, does it have a problem with antenna? There's something wrong with it. It doesn't, it, you, you, and it's very easy to, re, to realize what your baseline is. And, and, and then something sticks out, right? Uh, average, uh, average available access points, that's, that's another new metric. You're probably going to learn a lot of new KPIs. I'm, I'm not sure whether that's going to be any useful for you, but it's an interesting data. So remember when we were doing those, those numbers, how many extra access points do we actually see? So this is the average of that. You can see it was a very tight, I mean, the net, it was probably kind of overpopulated with access points, but that, that suited that customer because they were not really pushing a lot of traffic. They, that's an industry, they need to know that it's gonna work, even if 10% if or 20% of access points is going to die at the same time. It has to have a lot of overlap. So that's fine, but think about it. If you, if you were to sort them after that, after average available APs, you could see those that are, say, 1.2. 1.3. What does that mean? It means that when the clients are connected to that particular access point of average value 1.2, they only have 0.2 access point more. So if that one dies, some of the clients have nowhere to roam. Are you with me on this? Because the first one is the one that I'm connected to. If you have two, you have one more. If you have 1.2 as an average, you can realize that there are holes where you don't have a second access point. Of course, you can do a site survey, but this is from the clients. This is the real thing. I'm not saying the, uh, the, the, the site survey isn't, it is. But it, this is what you want to know. Where do you have, what is critical for your deployment? Say you find a hole, you find a, an isolated access point, which means like you have clients reporting very low average available APs when they use that access point. Meaning that they have very little other access points around it. Maybe you should consider looking at this, at doing kind of more planning around that area. Or when you have a thing like this going through the roof, 13 is probably too much even for this particular customer. You have like, like, like redundant APs. Maybe you should consider moving it to this place where, where you have 1.2 available access points. A thought. Interesting. Again, how the clients see that. APs cover, I mean, you have that information access points as well. Um, so we were looking at clients, remember here? There was a client that was, each and every row was representing a client. You might want to look at access points. What does it tell you? Well, you know the connection failure and connection failure percent. So you might figure out and realize which one is the bad guy to begin with. Then again, you don't know whether it's the, the access point that, that is doing something or, or the client, but you can at least say that the most of your connectivity issues are around this, this, and this, if you sort after that, which I don't in this particular case. Good idea to start. Connection failing percent, same, same, average RSSI. This is another story from the access point angle. So, so all the clients that use that particular access point see average RSSI of 62.7. Yeah, that's probably okay. But, well, but how about minus 73 or minus 87? That's not so good. Then again, it could be a, a sticky client that is coming through in that statistics like that. If this access point 
had a pleasure to meet a sticky client, it would look like this. So, so you have to kind of look in, into different metrics and, and figure out whether, where this data comes from. Because a sticky client would do just that. It would just spoil the average RSSI because it would stick connected, stay connected to it. And I think what I said here is available, this is where I wanted to talk about it. If you're looking at, because it's sorted after average available access points, you have 1.85. So it means that I have one access point and .85 more. Have you ever thought about fractional APs? Uh, it's actually the first time for me. So, so you, in some cases, you might not have a redundant access point to go to if that one fails. And the information. Well, uh, I believe I went a little bit too fast because that's it. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know, questions or, or, or comments? Uh, hold on a second. Let's get this for recording if you're going to ask a good question. I have a question about uh, roaming uh, algorithms because there are five different types of uh, roaming uh, techniques you can do, like pre authentication, or do you use uh, 11R here, for example? Well, this is the beauty of it. We, we don't use anything. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it, it's, it's all on the top of this. You're tapping to the APIs, you're tapping to the signals you get, and then it's your driver that is controlling your card behavior. Are you with me on this? So you might be, uh, whatever the radio support, however you set it up, both your uh, client and your access points, it'll collect the data. It, it, it's just transparent, you know, all the way. So you would like to no make a note, this is run with whatever, 11R or K enabled, or this is run without K or R enabled, or, or any combinations of that. Yet again, we're giving you data. You, you have to you know, use it in a way you think it's most uh, valuable for you. What are the parts that you need to make this happen? Right. So I think when you go back to um, this was very here, I think. So, so you, what you're having here is you have a very small piece of software running on those PCs. There is a PC in there. Uh, and that's it. I mean, you have a server that's visualizing it, but these, this piece of PC is making logs. If I back this, so here are those logs that we then import here and, and do the presentation. And it helped us in, in a lot of environments. Is, are those logs, uh, are they reported back real time or do you capture them and later do post analysis? Yes and yes. Both <laughs> real time, most of the time. We normally set the, the update on one minute. We keep track what was sent last. So if you are yourself offline, it would be difficult to upload logs. So they are stored, obviously. And then when you get online, you get all the, all the queue updated. So, so it's kind of near real time in here uh, in a server. And then the data is stored kind of until it fills up. Uh, so that's a lot of, that's a long time. Are you supporting or planning to support any platforms other than desktop Windows? And I saw this question can coming. You export this? <laughs> can this that's, data be exported yeah, yeah. using SNMP or just some other formats for integration? Uh, currently, we, for the collectors, because that's what we call it, we, we use, uh, we're running supporting Windows and, and we're looking at very seriously in Android. We do the pre-study and it should be doable within a reasonable time. And then we're looking at actually a couple other things. Linux uh, or, or believe it or not, Windows CE. You thought, uh, maybe you think, you think it's, it's died, but it's there, out there. It's a lot of those uh, readers and, and, and different kind of battery-driven uh, uh, terminals. So, so we don't know, most likely Android is going to be the next one. So I have a question. This is fantastic data. Again, I love empirical data. What's your reaction when you take this data, which obviously shows things to the driver manufacturers? How do they react when you give them this? Well, it's difficult. There's this chain that you have to follow normally. And, and, and of course, you might send it all the way to them, but I'm not sure. We haven't tried that. <laughs> so it, it, normally, we would get a customer come to us and says, we have a problem, we have a connectivity problem, we would run a test for a week or two, and we find this and this, this could be a potential problem. And it's more like they try to connect, contact, contact the, 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 um, the driver manufacturer, uh, or they go through yet another 
middleman, the kind of a distributor that, that sells the, the, the PC in that particular case. Uh, but most of the time, knowing about it, you, you remember Channel 91? I'm going to go there. You know what they did? Uh, they wrote this shell script. Uh, where was it? They wrote a shell script. Whenever it discovers this, it restarts the service, the Wi-Fi service. So th this is, they work around and it sticks. It, it's okay. I mean, it, you have a disruption of 10 seconds or something, but that's fine. And, and this is, you know, so much talking to, to uh, drivers and, and, and vendors. And, and they just needed to know when. They're, previously, before, we, they knew something was wrong. So they were looking at this, when, when there was a stop, they were looking at this, you know, Wi-Fi icon next to the clock in a tray bar, and they would say, aha, there are no other, S B, uh, no other SSIDs. Now it got stuck, so we have to restart it. But it was the, 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 the forklift operator that would do the job. Now they can write a script that'll, that'll just look at channel 89, and they were like, wow, we solved the problem. We're happy. Even though it's maybe not the elegant solution. Uh, j just first off, this is awesome stuff um, to see it from the client's perspective. Um, and I've got a similar talk later in the day, a little <laughs> plug. Um, but it looks like you're using high charts for the visualization. And I'm wondering if you had looked at using um, like Elasticsearch and Kibana or what's your back end? Well, it, it, we, we're outsourcing development to our partners. And, and to be honest, we're network people. It doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, as long as it looks good and, and we have a way to, to go through the data. And that's, that's by the way, uh, based on Windows Server. And, I, uh, and, and, and that's, that has worked for us really, really well with uh, SQL in the background, um, Microsoft SQL. So yeah, it's, we, there is basically no problem in changing it. We've been evolving because that's like last two years of, of development. We saw this. Initially, it was just a little debug tool. We had just the logs. And I learned Excel a great deal because I was importing it to Excel and, and, and doing all those fancy filters and coloring the rules just to find certain things that I was looking after. And then after, after a while, I realized, no, I'm not learning really fast to do this in this pace. There were too many logs coming in, so we realized we have to automate it. So here we are. Okay.